O oh, most holy heavenly Father, I praise you and bless your name. I thank you, Father, that in your sovereign will, you called me out and set me apart to serve your beloved Son when I was so very, very young. You have provided for me, protected me, and preserved me to this now advanced age. Lord, now that I am the only one of the inner twelve left on this earth, you have commissioned me to, to record those things that, that my eyes have seen and my hands have touched concerning the word of life. Lord, I am humbled and honored. Blessed Holy Spirit, energize my mind and my thoughts that I can set forth those things that others might know that Jesus Christ was indeed the Son of God and the Savior of the world. That not only what he said was true, but that he is truth. <laughs> Lord, where to start? How does one begin to, to tell the, the story of the greatest life ever lived. Although, Father, I was with him for nearly three years and experienced his gentle compassion, learned on a daily basis from his teachings and parables. Yes, and even participated in his, in his miracles. And though I knew that he was the Lamb of God, that last week, the passion, the fury, the humiliation, the violence came, Lord, as a cruel surprise. I remember as it were yesterday, we were on our way to Jerusalem for the Passover. Although we did not want him to go, we knew that the Jewish leaders were angry with him, already murderously angry. Why, from the very beginning of, the, of his life, they tried to kill him. During his ministry, they mocked him, jeered him, questioned his authority. Why, they even tried to entrap him with their legalistic jargon. But now, yes, now with his popularity running at an all-time high, and all the rumors, the incessant rumors that when Jesus would come to Jerusalem this time, he would overthrow the Romans by his awesome power and set up a new kingdom. I can still remember how the Jewish leaders and the Pharisees especially, fearing that their unholy alliance from where the Romans was coming apart and their cozy little power structure was about to collapse. The carpenter has been at it again. Now they say he called a man back from the dead over in Bethany. He certainly is building a reputation for himself. But I have seen him many times, and he isn't interested in building a reputation. I advise you to think before you speak, Joseph. This isn't the first man to have a bothersome reputation. Why don't you remember all the fuss that was caused by that uh, John? The one they call the baptizer. Of course we remember. We also remember how King Herod took care of that problem for us. Now this, this gluttonous, wine-bibber Galilean is certainly our problem. It seems, though, that there's always someone who thinks he knows more about God than we do. But perhaps there is someone who does. Doesn't Isaiah tell us of one who would come and bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim the favorable year of our Lord? Joseph, I don't think it is wise for you to quote Scripture to me. We do not need a lesson from the prophets. What we need is a plan to do away with this Nazarene Jesus. He seems intent on becoming more than a mere annoyance. But what if he really is the Messiah? Joseph, once more I will warn you, keep your opinions to yourself. You're beginning to tread on deadly ground. Maybe we should uh, 
Ignore this Jesus and he'll go away on his own. Uh, his miracles make him impossible to ignore. And every time we try to discredit him in an argument, I must admit, he makes us look like fools. <laughs> Not that you make it overly difficult for him. <laughs> you know the people are starting to call him king. Now, if the Romans hear much of that, they'll march in here and then we... But the kingdom he preaches is no threat to Rome. Listen to me. Listen. The Romans have made it clear. They will hold Jerusalem in a loose grip as long as we can keep things running smoothly. But now we have this lunatic king, a madman, who stirs up the people without even trying. What I am saying is, if we do not deal with this rebel now, Rome will certainly deal with us. <laughs> now you're starting to think wisely. How could you have missed something so obvious? After all, he's only one man. No matter how popular he becomes, he doesn't stand a chance against the Romans. All we have to do is let his ridiculous ambition to set up this kingdom run its pitiful little course. But he has no ambition to overthrow Rome. And he certainly doesn't want to rule your physical world. He only wants to rule in the hearts of men. Exactly. <laughs> and the people keep falling for these lies. And that makes our job even easier. Listen, he will come here to Jerusalem for the Passover. And the people will doubtless welcome his arrival as the end of Roman domination. The coming of a new king, the glorious son of David. But when they realize, as you seem to have, my friend Joseph, that he offers no kingdom, that instead of singing his praises, they will scream for his blood. And we, along with our friends the Romans, will be here to help him bleed. And that, my friends, will be the end of his threat to our religion. And that will be the end of Jesus. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, these were evil, dangerous times in Jerusalem because of evil men like that. But Jesus had emphatically insisted that he must attend the Passover that year. So, of course, we all went with him. Oh, we had been in Jerusalem before, of course, but it had never been like this. Why, this time, even before we, uh, we got to the gates of the city, the streets were crowded with people waving banners and palm branches and waving Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Why? They were ready to make him their king.
Yes. And so it was Passover in Jerusalem. Oh, what exciting times. The holy city was filled with, with tens of thousands of pilgrims. And the temple was more like a circus than a temple. You see, people who had to travel for days, many of them for weeks, to arrive at the holy city were uh, unable to bring their sacrificial animals with them for fear they might become, well, damaged along the journey. So most people had to purchase the animals for sacrifice once they arrived at the temple. And of course, only local money was acceptable for temple business. Uh, money changing was a huge industry. And the changing of money went on at unfair rates. And the prices, the prices that they were charged for the sacrificial animals, unconscionably high. Now, none of this should have been allowed to go on at all. But as long as Caiaphas, the high priest, and, and the other temple officers received their cut, uh, they were only too happy to ignore this desecration of God's holy house. Now, on the day after we arrived in Jerusalem, Jesus visited the temple and walked right into the middle of all this bedlam. doves gone nearly four dozen perfect lambs running loose and the money changer prophets scattered all over the ground Passover is our most profitable time of the year and this Jesus is ruining it we must take him into custody but not in the temple if we take him in the temple we will have a riot on our hands we have to take him privately, secretly. Secretly? How can we take him secretly? We don't even know where he's staying. I don't believe that's going to be a problem. <laughs> Let me introduce you to an old friend of his and a new friend of ours. This is Judas Iscariot, one of his dearest companions. I know where he's staying and I know where he goes to be alone. You see, I can lead you right to him. Judas, why do you want to help us? you just one of his followers. Well, not exactly. You see, I've only pretended to believe in this foolish kingdom of his for reasons of my own. But now the only thing that I believe is that I can help you if you make it worth my while. <laughs> Your loyalty to him is admirable. I admire a man whose loyalty I can buy. I'll make it worth your while. Yes. What price did you have in mind? Well, it seems fitting that I sell Jesus to you for the price of a common marketplace slave. Thirty pieces of silver should be a bargain to you, oh 
High priest of Israel, if it saves your business in the temple. Hmm. Only a bargain if you can deliver. So when do we get him? One more thing, Judas. There must be no crowds. Just Jesus and us. Well, you see, he's going to take the Passover meal with some of his disciples. I have to be there or he'll suspect I'm up to something. But afterwards, yes, afterwards, I can meet you here and lead you right to him. Very well. Malchus, give the man his 30 pieces of silver. And Judas, there will be no turning back. I own you now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Father, how can they hate your son so much? They don't even know him. I knew him. I followed him for years. I witnessed it on a daily basis. His life was the pure demonstration of God's love and power. Oh, I have so many wonderful memories of him. How he would heal the sick, cause the lame to walk and the blind to see. Why, he even cast out powerful demons all in the power of his holy name. Yes, and raise the dead. The crowds have lined the narrow streets To see this man from Galilee Just a carpenter, some say Leading fools astray Yet many kneel to give him praise And in his eyes I've heard
believe a word he says. I tell you, he has no power of his own. All these miracles he did, he did with the power of Beelzebub. The works that I do are not mine, but his who sent me. Are you angry with me because I do these things on the Sabbath? Truly I say, judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Here, harlot, cover your head. No. The shawl is only for the virtuous woman. <laughs> Rabbi, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. <laughs> we caught her ourselves. Now, according to the law of Moses, she should be stoned. But what do you say? Yes, the law is clear. So whichever one of you is without sin may throw the first stone. Where are the men who accused you? Who is left to condemn you? No one, Lord. Neither do I. Now go and sin no more.
As the Passover week continued, the crowds became more and more restless. Was Jesus going to overthrow the Romans or not? And where was this kingdom they had come to expect? I could sense that some were getting very angry. It became increasingly apparent to all of us that it would take very little to turn the crowd completely against him. We tried to warn him of the danger he was in. We told him that we were afraid that those who wanted him, well, out of the way, might very well succeed in killing him this time. I remember he smiled. And he told us that dying was indeed a part of what he planned to do, but only a part. On the night before the Passover, we all gathered in a private room upstairs in a home for what was to be our last meal together, unaware that this would be the night that Judas would betray our Lord. He's a dreamer. He's just a dreamer. And I don't think I can take it one more day, I just can't stay. He promised us a kingdom, and he talked about a crown. But now I see I was better off before he brought me poverty. Now there's just misery. Judas, I love you, Judas, my heart is full of pain, I know what you must do, I feel the sad embrace, Judas, must it be, Judas, his very dreams become the nightmare he must face. It's all a 
my love and teachings be in vain. The Lamb must be slain. Judas, I love you, Judas. Why can't you feel tomorrow's pain? Now it's time for me to show the world my love and the love of my Father in heaven. My children, in a little while I'll be taken from you and you will not be able to go with me. Lord, what do you mean taken from us? I'll go anywhere you go, even if it means my life. Peter, will you really lay down your life for me? This very night before the rooster crows, three times you will deny that you even know me. No, never! Don't let your hearts be troubled. You already believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many homes. If it were not so, I would surely have told you by now. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, you can be certain I will come again for you so that you can be there with me. But Jesus, how can we come to you if we don't know the way? I am the way the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. I have a new commandment for you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. This is how all men will know that you are my disciples, by the love that you have for one another. It is time to leave this place. As he spoke, I wondered, how can he speak of his own death with such peace? And why speak of it at all? I wonder still what he thought as he embraced and spoke to each of us. Could he see what was ahead and still look at us with unmeasured love, knowing the cowardice and the shame that would mark us during the next 12 hours. I can still hear his tender words of compassion. He seemed more solemn than I'd ever seen him. Almost sad. Then I realized Jesus was bidding us farewell. He knew that the life we had shared for almost three years was coming to an end. He had been sent to earth to do his father's plan and now he knew that the time had come to carry out that will. So after we had sung a hymn, we left the place where we had gathered and we walked with him across the city that night to a place outside the city walls, a place called Gethsemane, an olive grove where Jesus had often gone to pray. 
he knew that Judas would bring the Jewish leaders and the Roman soldiers there to find us. He knew what his father's plan required him to do. And he knew that the time had come for him to die. Of Gethsemane, Jesus led us. Though we could not feel the pain he had to bear, he left us and seeking out a quiet place. In agony and suffering, he knelt in prayer. Father, Father, let this cup pass from me. Father, Almighty Father, all things are possible with Thee. Father, Most Holy Father, hear the prayer of this Thy Son. Not my will, not my will, not my will, but Thine. the prayer of this thy son, not my will, not my will, not my will, but thine be Wake up! The time has come for the Son of Man to be betrayed into the hands of angry sinners. Friend, why have you come? Greetings, Rabbi. That's the one! Take him! No! Peter, put away your sword! No! Don't you realize I could call to the Father and he would send 12 legions of angels? But if I were to do that, how would the scriptures be fulfilled? All these things must come to pass. Guards, make it. Come, King Jesus. <laughs> oh, I'll leave him. We've got who we need. <laughs> cowards! Cowards! We were all cowards. Fled, left him alone. Fearing the authorities might eventually come back for all of us. I finally came and found Peter hiding in the bushes and convinced him that we should follow the soldiers from a distance as they took Jesus to the house of Caiaphas. I had friends who, who worked inside, so I was able to, to slip in and overhear much the, of what went on while, while Peter 
waited with a crowd that had gathered in, in the courtyard while Caiaphas conducted his unholy interrogation. So, King Jesus, tell me all about your little group of followers and tell me what you've been teaching them. Perhaps I can be merciful with you. I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where the Jews gather. I have said nothing in secret. Why ask me what I have taught? Ask those who have heard me. They know what I've said. How dare you talk to the high priest like that? I've said something wrong. Tell me what it was. Otherwise, why do you hit me? Oh, there is much more than that in store for you, O oh Jesus of Nazareth. Even now the council is gathering to hear the case against you. We've wanted you for years, and now we have you. We have witnesses, Galilean. We can even prove that you claim to be the Son of God. Convene the council, let's get this business over with. The council is now an official session. Let us hear what uh, these men have to say. This man says that he could tear down the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have an answer? Don't you care to respond to what these men have said against you? Who are you? Who do you claim to be? I demand of you that you swear by the living God and tell this council plainly whether you are the Messiah, the Son of God. I am. Blasphemer! What more evidence do we need? His own words condemn him. I say he is guilty. What is the decision of the council? Guilty! guilty. We find guilty. you guilty! I am God's authority over the Jews, and you are through interfering in my affairs. This is for all the trouble you have caused me. The Son of God, huh? Let's see him prophesy. <laughs> prophesy to us if you're the Messiah. Tell us the names of the men who are striking you. I wish we could kill you ourselves, but the Romans won't let us. Oh, but you will die. When Governor Pilate hears our charges, he'll have you crucified. Take him away! No, I wonder what's going to happen to him. Who cares? If Jesus isn't going to give us a kingdom, I don't care what happens to him. I hope they kill him. Didn't I see you with him? Your face sure looks familiar. Weren't you with that man the soldiers took away? Oh, you're wrong. I'm not the one you saw. I don't even know the man In fact, I just got into town today What have I done? After all he's done for me I remember the day he called me away By the Sea of Galilee How his words brought peace to me how could I have denied his name? I saw him with Jesus, I never forget a face And there are others standing by who will agree I tell you I don't know that man, it must have been someone else There's a thousand in this city who look like me What am I doing? How could I forget so fast? 
past All the things that we've been through Like the night he rescued me Pulled me off from the stormy sea And now that he needs me I will let him down Surely you are one of them Your voice gives you away And there are others standing by Who will agree I swear that I don't know that man Like I told you all alone better now for me if I were dead <laughs> the soldiers dragged Jesus from the council chambers to Pilate's judgment hall but Pilate who understood very little of the Jewish religion was not eager to decide the case against Jesus. When Pilate learned that Jesus was from Galilee and that Herod, who was the Jewish leader over that section, was also in the holy city to, to celebrate the Passover, oh, he was delighted. So Pilate cleverly decided to let Herod deal with the claims of the king of the Jews. <laughs> well, now, who do we have here? <laughs> come in, come in. It is so good to have you as a guest in our home. <laughs> uh, although, after seeing you, you are hardly what I expected. It is hard for me to believe that this is what Caiaphas and Pilate can't seem to deal with. I hardly see what all the fuss is about. <laughs> Jesus, the son of a carpenter. <laughs> they tell me that you can perform miracles, that you can heal the <coughs> yeah, sick, <laughs> that you can raise people from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Do something. Entertain me. Well, <laughs> go ahead. You can walk across my pool of water anytime. <laughs> well, call down the angels if you wish. Huh. Just as I expected. I suppose there won't be any miracles today. Just as well, we certainly wouldn't want to inconvenience you any now. Rabbi, you are so pathetic. Oh, and oh, so dirty. Guards, this man does not amuse me. He looks as if he's not had rest in days. Why don't we just release him and then let him go? Bring someone else to entertain me. This man is a bore. <laughs> oh, but Jesus, Jesus, there's just one thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is, if you're not too busy. I'm confused. We need to clear up this little rumor about you're being the king of the Jews. I, Herod, am the king of the Jews. You know, you can make life so much easier on yourself if you just take back this little rumor. Now you can do that for me, can't you? Well, speak up, man. First you won't do a miracle and now you won't agree to a simple compromise. 
I was told that you might be difficult. Do you know that Caiaphas wants you dead? And what Caiaphas wants, he usually gets. But, but, maybe not this time. I have a plan. You take back this rumor about your being the Messiah and leave Jerusalem forever. A small compromise, really, considering the trouble that you're in. And I'll see to it that Caiaphas leaves you alone. Yes. It's a good plan. That's what we'll do. Okay? Have we an agreement? I said, have we an agreement? Ah! You fool! You mock me with your silence! I tried to be reasonable, but you brought all of this upon yourself! <laughs> Guards, take him back to Pilate! And tell him, this is what Herod thinks of his king of the Jews. Indeed, the king of the fools. <laughs> Pilate. Pilate had been informed of all the events of that long, long night. He knew how the prisoner had been humiliated and beaten and slapped and accused falsely. Although he thought him an innocent man, he realized that he was in a very sticky political situation. And this time, he had better handle it properly. One more complaint to Rome, one more uprising. And Pilate would find himself in very deep trouble with his commanders all the way up to, to Caesar. I, I thought at the time, and I still do, that Pilate was really bothered by not being able to be more fair and just in this matter. handle this I'll have to deal with it myself what accusation do you bring against this man and it had better be good why uh, if he weren't a criminal we would not have brought him to you you say he's a criminal yes. fine then you take him and judge him according to your laws we would do exactly that governor pilot but under your most gracious laws we can't carry out the execution he so richly deserves he claims to be our king and that makes him a traitor to Rome. What do you say for yourself, King Jesus? My kingdom is not of this world. So you do say that you're a king. You say that I am a king. I came into the world to speak the truth. All who love the truth hear my voice. Bah, what is truth? This man is no criminal. I find no fault in him. But, but he is a criminal. He claims to be the Son of God, and that makes him a blasphemer. Jewish blasphemy is none of my concern. Ah, but his claim to be king is your concern. I wonder what Caesar would say if he learned you had failed to punish one who said he was king of the Jews. What will I do with you, Jesus? Why don't you defend yourself? Don't you realize I have the authority to have you crucified? You would have no authority against me at all, unless it was given to you by my Father above. I'll have you beaten for that! <laughs> Guards, give him the whip! <laughs> Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen.
Like a quiet ray of sunshine in a darkened room, he came in. And I felt my heart within me long to turn away and hide from him. Of me, now at last I've seen this prophet, priest from Galilee, of whom I've heard, and it angers me the way he stares into my eyes without a word. I wash my hands of you, King Jesus. <laughs> Stand him up. <laughs> a robe. A king should have a robe for King Jesus. And a scepter. <laughs> and a crown of thorns. Shall we have a crown for the king? <laughs> A crown for King Jesus! <laughs> Hail, King of the Jews! Hail, King of the Jews! Away with him! Let him be crucified! Beaten. Bloody. And now, sentenced to die, they made him carry his own cross to the place of his execution. Through those twisting streets, before the maddening, angry, mocking crowd, dragging that horrible symbol of his guilt and his shame. As his weakened body would fall beneath the load. They would whip and goad him until he moved on. Uh, as I watched, I saw that he looked up and in the crowded streets saw the face of his mother. Yes, Mary was there, weeping and watching in horror.
had a sign placed on the cross which read in three languages, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. It was the very day of the Passover. In the temple, the high priest would select a perfect lamb and prepare it for sacrifice, thanking God for his mercy and his love. Meanwhile, Outside the city walls, on a garbage heap called Calvary, the real Passover sacrifice was being paid by Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God.
I stood there helplessly with Mary, Jesus' own mother. Watching her son die was the worst kind of atonement a mother could possibly bear. But even then, with his body torn to shreds and his soul in agony, he thought of others. He turned and called my name. He said, John, yes, Lord. John, take care of my mother as if she were your own. That was so like him. Thinking of others, even during his unspeakable pain. From that day on, I took care of Mary as if she were my own mother. At noon, an eerie darkness covered the land. Again he spoke, this time crying out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? After three more hours of the strange darkness and horrible pain, he yielded up his spirit into the hands of his loving Heavenly Father and then went with one last triumphant cry proclaimed it is finished Truly, this was the Son of God. as well make sure he's dead.
We needed a place to lay him. Joseph of Arimathea, one of the Jewish council who at the last had come to believe in Jesus, agreed to give up the tomb that he had purchased for his own use. Oh, if, if only we had remembered in our grief what Jesus had said about his resurrection, we would have realized that Joseph was only lending Jesus that grave for a very short time. The Jewish leaders, knowing full well the implications of Jesus' words when he said, destroy this temple and I will rebuild it again in three days, or I will rise again, requested that a Roman guard be posted at the grave, fearing that somehow the body might be disturbed. Everything on earth and in hell stands against the resurrection. The hosts of hell, having witnessed his death, now mock at the very idea of his rising again. Nature says, he cannot rise. He's a dead man in, in a rock-hewn tomb. Those iron legions of Rome say, he will not rise, for the seal of the mighty Caesar is on that grave. Death, that monarch of terror, says I will not allow him to rise, for now he belongs to me. The clouds had not yet lifted, the tomb was sealed and dark. The cruel cross had crucified the hope of every heart. The Son of God, the Lord of life, by death had been destroyed. Yet in the silence of the tomb, he heard his Father's voice. Arise, arise, first star. early on Sunday morning, about dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other women came to the tomb to ask permission of the guards to anoint the body of Jesus. When they arrived at the tomb, the guards were gone, the, the stone was rolled aside. When they looked inside, the body of Jesus was gone. 
I can still remember Mary's tear-streaked face as she ran toward Peter and me. We thought she was hysterical as she grabbed us and screamed something about, they have stolen my Lord and I don't know where they have laid him. Although we thought she was having delusions because of her grief, we went with her to the tomb and it was true, everything she said. Inside the tomb were the burial cloths neatly wrapped and laid where Jesus had been. But he was gone. Who would do such a thing? Who would steal the body of our Lord? And why? After we discussed it for a while, we decided that we would go and tell others. Peter and I left. But Mary, Mary stayed at the tomb alone weeping. Woman, why are you weeping? Because they've taken my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Sir, Please, if you've taken him, please tell me where you've laid him, that I may take him away. Mary. Master? Oh, Master. Do not cling to me, Mary, for I have not yet ascended to my father. Instead, go to the disciples and tell them that I go up to my father and your father. I will, Lord. I will. Mary did just as Jesus had said. She immediately ran, found us, and told us everything. Later that same day, cowards that we were, we'd gathered in a enclosed, a locked-in room, afraid. Unsure, not knowing what to do next, when suddenly he appeared. Jesus just appeared in that locked room with us. It was true, he was alive. He showed us his hands and his side, and he spoke to us. He said, Peace, as the Father has sent me. So send I you. Hope sprang anew in our hearts. Jesus was with us again. But there were questions. How long would he be here? What were we to do? He was not always with us during the next 40 days. He was seen and walked with and spoke with more than 500 people. Finally, he sent word to us that we should meet him on a mountain outside of Jerusalem. There, on that final day, he gave us instructions. Our great commission. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all things that I have commanded you. And never forget, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. The sky shall unfold, prepare. The stars shall applaud with thunders of praise. The sweet light is 
Now, my friend, may I have a further moment of your time? If you're like I am, your heart is so full, overflowing with praise for what our great God has achieved by his suffering, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. And soon, and some of us believe very soon, he's coming again. Now, maybe... You've never personally received Christ into your heart. You believe in Him. You love Him in your own way. But you've never gotten it settled that you belong to Christ. That burden of sin has not yet been lifted. God's Holy Spirit does not whisper sweetly to your heart that you belong to Jesus. You want to know that you're saved. You want to know that your sin is forgiven. You want power for living. You want a hope that is steadfast and sure. You want to know that when you die, you're going to heaven. I'd like to help you to get that settled. 
And I remind you one more time that salvation is a gift purchased with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And therefore the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's found in Acts chapter 16 and verse 31. And that word believe doesn't mean mere intellectual belief. It includes that. But the Bible word believe means trust. Trust. Commit your heart to Christ and he will save you. And he'll do it right now. And as you watch this, I want you to pray a prayer like this. Are you ready? Pray this way from your heart. Dear God, I know that you love me. I know that you want to save me. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you paid my sin debt with your blood on the cross. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And I now open my heart. And like a child, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive my sin. Cleanse me. Save me, Lord Jesus. Would you pray that prayer? Pray it from your heart. Save me, Lord Jesus. Did you ask him? Then by faith pray this way. Thank you for saving me, Jesus. I don't deserve it, but I receive it by faith like a child. I don't look for a sign. I don't ask for a feeling. I stand on your word. You're now my Lord, my Savior, my God, and my friend. And Lord Jesus, because you died for me, I will live for you if you'll only help me. And I know you will. Now, if you prayed that prayer, why don't you write us and let us know? And we'll send you some literature to help you to get started in the Christian life. God bless you, my friend. And now, years later, I, John, exiled to the island of Patmos. And I looked, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne, and round about the throne sat four and twenty elders, clothed in white raiment. And on their heads, crowns of gold. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord to receive glory and honor and power. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels around the throne. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the sea and in the sea heard I say, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And then I saw heaven standing open, and there was before me a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire. On his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one but he himself knows. His name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with a rod of iron. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters shouting, Hallelujah! For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us be glad and give Him glory. For behold, He is coming soon. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come! And let Him who hears say, Come! Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus!
is Lord. Let's sing that as we go out. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Good night. He is Lord.